Alright everybody, welcome back to Conqueror and Commander. Today we're going to be looking at a game featuring the Devourer for P Power Pre-Constructed Commander deck. Um, the deck has not been changed. You're going to see cards that look like they don't belong in the deck because they're white-bordered or whatever. Uh, I just put the deck together based on the, my own collection uh, using the list for the um, for the deck. I didn't actually purchase it, so... Anyways, um, let's take a look at our opponents here. First we've got Azami Lady of Scrolls, Mono Blue, Wizards, and Draw. Tons of Draw. Sherem, Esper, Artifact Control. And Mariki, another Esper Control deck. So, a lot of control and a lot of blue in this game here. My opening hand looks okay. I don't have any green mana, um, but it has a Soul Ring that I can play on the first turn. So I decide to keep it. And I've got Wonder in my hand, and even though I've got a lot of ways to make blue mana, Soul Ring for a zombie, um, this is the lack of islands turns into an issue for me at the end. A zombie uses Thespian Stage to copy <coughs> her own island. Ancestral Vision for Mariki. Oh, he tutored for it. He mystical tutored for Ancestral Vision. Um, so yeah, I, uh, cycled Lonely Sandbar and put a counter on my Dreadship Reef, Cavern of Souls for Wizard, and then a zombie comes out, Sharon plays Master of Ethereum, <coughs> Revoke Existence on the Soul Ring. Trying to keep a zombie off of the early mana. And then I play Wonder. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, all my dudes are going to have flying in a minute. So wrong. Sword of Feast and Famine. Equipping a zombie. Attacking Mariki. And then Gilded Lotus for Echo Mage. It's interesting. I, it's rare when you see a zombie actually attack. Uh, Master of Ethereum goes after Mariki as well. Sword of Feast and Famine is really an issue for my deck more than the other guys. Echo Mage, always looking cool. Sarah Ascendant. Oh yeah, he he demonic tutored for Sarah Ascendant. That's right, it's because he needed a, a blocker and a life linker, and he's at thirty-seven, and he can block all these guys right here. So I siphon flesh. Um, because it's pretty good value and gets rid of a decent amount of stuff. And I don't attack. The zombie plays... This is interesting. He plays Ethereal Usher, transmuting it for back from the brink. And I assume because he's blue, he doesn't have a whole lot of recursion, so this is the best way to get his creatures back. And he plays back from the brink. Attacks the Mariki player again. And then basically uh, brings back DMX here, Echo Mage, and levels him up a little bit. Sharon does nothing. Mariki plays Shadow Mage Infiltrator. I have Terramorphic Expanse. So I play tri Tribute to the Wild. Get rid of some stuff. And this is another mistake. I play Terramorphic Expanse and I don't get an I island. This is all big foreshadowing, guys. I needed an island. Then I play Mind's Glow. Not a big fan of Mind's Glow in this deck, but it ended up working out alright in this turn. I paid like 6 mana or something for it. Sherem kicks in some mana. So you draw a whole mess of cards here. And I attack everybody except Mariki. And I'm fine with putting a bunch of like fat stuff in my graveyard. Because uh, I've got living death. What I'm hoping is people start you know, playing a bunch of creatures. There's Courtly Provocateur. You don't see her too often. Serendip Sorcerer. Don't see her too often. Attack Sherem. Uh, Sharam discards Blightsteel Colossus. Wow. Thalicos Deceiver. 
discards a bunch of land. Fabricate. For Soul Ring, playing the Soul Ring. And return to dust on the Sword and the Gilded Lotus. But the return to dust gets muddled mixtured. Which is a little bit of a bummer. It'd be nice to have that sword go away. The Ancestral Vision finally pops off. Heat Trinket Mages, Mariki Trinket Mages for Soul Ring. Plays the Soul Ring. And then Frexian Metamorph. Copying the Gilded Lotus, copying, uh, playing Bitter Blossom. So, first I play my Signet, I draw a Slipstream Eel. I saw that Eel a lot. And I attack Sherem and Mariki, or Sherem and Azami again, and then I Living Death. And he digs for cards, but doesn't find anything. So Slipstream Eel actually works out in this game because everybody's playing Islands, even though Sherem doesn't have one in play. But yeah, he personal tutors for her Rite of Replication. He doesn't have a Wizard in play. And then he plays Sword of Light and Shadow. She. So she's got two swords out there. She equips the sword on the Usher, both swords. And attacks the murky player. And gets one of the creatures from his graveyard. Oh yeah, Stony Brook Banneret. Sharon plays Righteous... Oh. Warm Coil Engine was in his graveyard? I must have missed that. Righteous Authority on Warm Coil Engine. Luckily for me... I've got Triskelevis and a 1 mana, so I pull a counter off Triskelevis, block the Worm Coil Engine, and then sacrifice it before damage is dealt so that he doesn't gain any life. And I hit him. Yeah, so he goes down to 32. And he plays Dark Steel Plate. No, not planes. There's the plate. Mariki gets a Bitter Blossom token. Sarah Ascendant's small now because she's down to 25. And she mind twists the Azami player. Who proceeds to try and spell jack it. Mind twist for 7. Uh, but Mariki has Counter Squall. <laughs> so Azami has to dump her hand. Still no islands. At least I got Vorosh out there. A slipstream eel. So I send the eel after the murky player and Vorosh after a zombie. Then I play Memory Erosion. Red of Replication targeting the Worm Coil Engine. Kicked. But Mariki has an answer. There's Path to Exile on the Worm Coil Engine. Preventing the Kicked Right of Replication. Which is a good thing. And he attacks the Mariki player again. Oh, and I prevent the Azami player from getting whatever creature she wanted from her graveyard with the Sword of Light and Shadow by using Nizumi Grave Robber. So she still has no cards in hand. But she does play Azami. And draws a card or two. Three. <laughs> Sherem has Academy Ruins and Vault of the Archangel out there. And plays Shieldred. Sweet. Seen a lot of Shieldred recently. Who then gets Dark Steel plated. So 
Mariki just has a fairy that she sacrifices and gets another one in return. Play Supreme Verdict. Wiping everybody's critters. Might pull some counters off the Triskelevis to ping people. Right now, Azami's at 15, Sherem's at 30, Mariki's at 18. Oh, yeah. Then uh, Mariki plays the Jace the Mind Sculptor and bounces Shieldred. That actually worked out pretty well there. So I've had enough with the swords. I've got a Cidic Slime, and I blow up the sword of Feast and Famine. And then I played Desecrator Hag getting Vorosh back in my hand. Zami plays her commander. And plays Frexian Metamorph, copying the Desecrator Hag, getting something back from her graveyard. I'm not sure what. You know what? Might as well take a look real quick. What was that? Gilded Drake. Interesting. Sharon plays Debtor's Nell, which should be good with all these fat stacked graveyards. And then a zombie concedes. Oh well. Um, she was down to 11. I mean, she probably could have hung around for a while, honestly. Mariki plays Phantasmal Image. She's going to copy the Acidic Slime and get rid of the Debtor's Nell. There it is. And then Mariki comes out to play. Brawn in my gr hand. I send both my guys after the Sharon player. He drops down to 26, then Oblivion Stone, which gets counterspelled. Fine, I'm going to play Brawn. At least Brawn will be active. I still haven't drawn an island. Oh yeah, Sharon has an Ancestral Vision suspended. And there's Staff of Nin. And he pinks Mariki. Jason brainstorms for Mariki, and Soren Lord of Innistrad comes out to play, making another token. I attack with Brawn because I want Brawn in my graveyard. And I do the Mimeoplasm, copying Baleful Strix just to draw a card, and something else, I don't even remember what. There's a flying, death-touching, trampling, baleful strix. There's not a lot of huge stuff in any of the graveyards right now. Except for mine, I guess. So Sharon's going to be drawing cards here with the staff and some other stuff. There's Microsynth Wellspring. Staff of an ending something. Gilded Lotus, uh, Angel of Despair comes out and kills Soren, or tries to, but Mariki Echoing Truths Soren. So now we've got more, fair there's a Angel of Despair, Jace uh, Brainstorms again, Fleshbag Marauder comes out. I go ahead and sacrifice uh, Acidic Slime, and the Angel's gone to Ponder for Mariki. Sword of Feast of Famine of his own. She equips to the Vampire and attacks the Sharon player. Soren comes back out to play. 
Makes another little dude. And I attack Jace and... Or no, I'm yeah, I attack Jace to get rid of Jace. Then I play Vorosh. And then I play Patron of the Nizumi. What does Sharon do? Sharon plays Sharon, who brings Sword of Light and Shadow. And then Shouldered comes back out to play. Copy Artifact copies the Guild of Lotus. So, Shouldered gets the uh, Dark Steel Plate and the lo uh, Sword. What does Soren do here? Nothing. I'm sorry. Mariki does nothing. So I sacrifice my Mimeoplasm to Shildred and I attack um, sending Vorosh after Sharon and Patron of the Nizumi after Soren and the Mariki player throws all the tokens in front of the Patron So at least that knocks him down a little bit. So, Ricky's at 17. Um, Sharon's at 13. I'm going to bury it alive. So that I'll have something fat and fun in my graveyard. But Extractor Demon, Butcher of Malachur, and Eternal Witness in my graveyard. Or troll ascetic, my bad. Then I play the Mimeoplasm again. I copy Angel of Despair. And Thopter Assembly was in Sherem's graveyard. And I blow up the Sword of Light and Shadow that um the Sharon player had on shouldered. So Ancestral Vision finally pops. There's Trinket Mage. Searching up Dark Steel Citadel. Praetor's Council targets Mariki. Both of these guys go after me because the murky player had connection problems and dropped. So this isn't, I mean I can't block Shouldered uh, and I can block Sharon but it just means that he's going to be able to get stuff out of his graveyard if I, so that he can cast it again. I just take the damage and I go to 27. He did not use Vault of the Archangel. He does cast Sphinx Summoner. To get Duplicant. And then Duplicant's my Vorosh. Sad times, right? Okay. So this is this is where things go bad for me. Um stop. I decide to sacrifice my Mimeoplasm first. Oh no, I didn't sacrifice my Mimeoplasm. I, t I sacrificed my Desecrator Hack. And I knock him down to. It is flying and trample. He's at 14. I attack with my 10, 10, 3 points of damage. This isn't where things go bad yet. So he drops down to 7. And then I play Mole Drifter. And then I dump a card. And then I play 
Dark Hatchling to get rid of Duplicate. Put Duplicate in the graveyard. Then I Windfall because he's got four cards in hand and I've only got two. And I get Stitched Together and Spell Crumple. All right. So he's at seven, I'm at 26. He gets Rune Scar Demon into play. And I'm not even really sure how he did that. Oh, Rune Scar Demon comes from Shouldered. That's right. He tutors something up. I don't know what it is. There's Memnark. Sweet. He turns my Angel of Despair slash Mimeoplasm into... Oh, he attacks me first. And then he turns my Angel of Despair Mimeoplasm into an artifact creature and steals it with Memnark. Now, I'm a little misled right here. So I sacrificed Mol Moldrifter uh, because my last three creatures all had flying. Dark Hatchling, Mol no, not Sadek, Moldrifter, and Angel of Despair. So I'm thinking that the Wonder in my graveyard is active right now. And I draw Lightning Greaves. I'm very happy about this. I can stitch together to bring back Acidic Slime to blow up the Angel of Despair. And then I'll cast the Mimeoplasm again. He's got in his graveyard um, Duplicate, Avacyn, and Darksteel Juggernaut. And what I decide to do is copy the Duplicate with my Mimeoplasm so I can get rid of the Rune Scarred Demon and exile Avacyn. Well, the problem with that plan is that uh, it would work, actually, if all my creatures had flying. But, unfortunately, my creatures don't. Which means... And what I was going to do is duplicate the Runescar Demon to get the Runescar Demon out of the way. To get the flying blocker out of the way. And then, um... Just fly over him. Uh, what I should have done was... Copied the duplicate and exiled... The... Dark Steel Juggernaut. Because that would have had enough. But I was worried about Avacyn and all this other crap. So here I go. Here's the Mimeoplasm. So it's a 10-12. I get rid of the Runescar Demon. So I've got 14, 16, plus 3. Wait, is that right? God, it still wasn't enough. He's at 20. Oh, that's right. There was a... The ex the extractor demon. And that was the extra. So everybody's got trample. The only two creatures that don't have haste or that don't have flying are these two right here. So I've got 19, 21, 24 points of damage right here. And he's got a creature with five toughness. And if I had exiled the Dark Steel Juggernaut instead of Avacyn, I would have won right here. Yeah, he's at three. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I would have had the extra three power to get over it. But he concedes after that, because he's tired. And it's late. Anyways, game I should have won, but I screwed up. And he probably would have taken it right there. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed the game. Thanks.